choppers. Yeah, I got some more done on the Monte Carlo here, if so I'd show you guys. Of course, I showed the engine was in last time, but hooked up some more stuff. That fuel line hooked up. Got the transmission lines and the fuel line ran to the back. The battery sitting in here, but no cables yet. I guess the starter is on it, but got the header on this side. That's all done. All the coils are on. That's done. Carbs on. Done. Getting where you just need to hook up some of these wires to get it running. Got a radiator hose on the bottom. Still needs a clamp there, but you got two different sizes. This end is bigger than the radiator end. So they had to adapt it in the middle. That's why there's two clamps there. Also had to do that on the top hose. There are hoses that will hook up, but none of them are bent right. Really not the right length. So he did the same thing there. Cut it and hooked it together with a piece of steel pipe there. Get the overflow tank hooked up. Power steering is hooked up. Should be full of oil, I believe, yeah. Had to buy a special fitting down here. To hook those two together because one's metric and one's not or something weird maybe it's just because it's a ford to chevy who the hell knows anyways got the exhaust on this side of course all the coil packs all that good stuff got the brakes on that was on before. Got a master cylinder on there. That's off the G body. Bought a brand new proportioning valve. I don't know what to say about that. I bought one of them for my Firebird and all it did was leak everywhere. Leaked out of there. Leaked back there. There's a piece of garbage. That bracket is off an S10 to hold the proportioning valve. It's kind of hard to see down in there, but you can see it bolts to the booster and then comes out here and you bolt the proportioning valve to it. No brake fluid in it yet. He's wanting to stick a lumina master cylinder on. I think he found one. Hasn't got that far yet. Got a throttle cable out here and through the firewall. Of course the thing don't want to focus because it's bright sunshine out here and not bright sunshine out here. We got a radiator in it. That is out of an older Monte Carlo. Because that's the only one you can get with a cap. Instead of a tank, an overflow tank or whatever they call it, everything all together. One unit, you just wanted a cap to put on it. Not a cap to put on it, but just one of them with a fill cap right here. And of course, the fan module assembly for this car would not hook up to the radiator because the mounts are in a different spot you can see it better on this side went to the junkyard grabbed a fan assembly off an older mine that is the same year as this radiator and it wasn't even the same told them that's part of that chinese fit stuff but they say it's the same, but it ain't the same, so it's supposed to slide down in this notch down in here. Stupid thing ever come in. This plastic piece is supposed to slide into there. Of course, it's not in the right spot. This is a stupid thing. Get to where I can see something. Anyways. Too bright out here. We're trying to look down in a dark hole. There you can see some washers stacked behind the radiator in the mouth there to get to sit out. He stuck some bolts in it up here to hold it on. I believe there's some across the bottom just like the top too. So that's all in. Also there's a the transmission cooler down inside here. 
few lines going over through there. Loop around, come out over here. Put the transmission fluid in the transmission. Maybe. Yeah, it looks like there's a little bit of oil on it. That's the 4L80 I built. Full manual. Same as the Impala has in it. This is right there. Still working on that. And the same as my S10 that's in the building there. Up on the hoist. First you got all the brakes on, you can see all that. All new hoses, lines are in. See some lines up in there. First you got all the brakes on the rear end too. New hoses. All that stuff, some lines are in. We ran a problem. He's sticking the wheel on and he's sticking the studs on. Or not the studs on, but sticking the lug nuts on. Brand new chrome lug nuts and that is why you should run a tap through your brand new chrome lug nuts because the chrome flashing inside the lug nuts gets balled up on the studs and then you cannot get the lug nuts off and that's what it did to it. It screwed that one completely up. That was a little weird there, that was a little weird out there, and so was that one, and it ate a chunk out of that one too. She ordered five new studs to put on it. I'll lift it up here, you can look underneath. Look at some of the progress underneath. You can see there's not much left in the trunk now, it's getting a little more bare. Still needs the paint up in there. Not out of paint. Same black paint used on the floor, which is a good industrial quality, chemical resistant paint. Basically the same as an Emeron enamel. Good stuff. I'll lift it up here. Maybe I'll look inside. I don't think it did much in here. Yeah, it looks about the same as it did. The last time I showed you it was like that. There's all the pedals around. You see the fuel fuel pedal, gas pedals in there, accelerator pedal. Inside's getting just about where I need to hook some wires up and stuff. We'll lift her up here and I'll show you. Okay, got the Monty lifted up in the air. You can look underneath. All the subframes in, I might have showed all this before. I don't remember, it's been a while since I did a video on this. And you can see all the brakes up in there. Some of the lines ran up in there. Fuel line ran to the back all along here. Up over the frame. To there, to where the fuel pump is. There's the fuel pump's mounted on there. Of course, it needs to be wired up. Get a mount up here. To mount the fuel pump to the body. And you can see those upper aftermarket trailing arms in it. But there is a problem with those, and I'll show that here in a little bit. But there you can see the brake line are in. The hose there. It might be a G body rear hose too. I don't know what they ended up using there. Of course, this ran all the way to the front here too. Up to the brakes, and there you can see the exhaust, the headers, that side. The exhaust going to have to come back here, and probably go in along the tunnel here. Same as on that side. That's going to be a little tight there, but not really hanging any further down than the subframe part is. I think I showed the transmission in there before. Didn't you can look at it again, or you can see the converter up in there. And that Moroso oil pan, uh, dry shaft loop, dry shaft sand. Don't know if I showed that or not. Well, what else? I think that's getting about it underneath here. I think I might have showed that cover before. There you can see the brakes back here a little bit better. Line ran across there, over there. These fancy KYB shocks. 
one thing I don't remember if I should or not, but right here, we connected the front subframe to the rear subframe to help stiffen it up. You see it on this side too. It's like a piece we added in right here. Drilled some drainage holes. They got water in it there. And these arms here, these are the factory arms still. And the problem is, these are off. I can't remember the year, 2000 something. I'm not a Mustang expert. Don't remember what I got them off of, but you got those aftermarket arms. These newer ones have bigger bolts in them. Maybe some of you Ford experts know what year that was changed. And the aftermarket arms have smaller bolts in them. So that kind of screws things up. Here's the lower arms he's going to install on it. Here's the bolt that matches the rear end. You can see that won't fit through it. Will not fit. I believe these are the right size bolts that came in. And you see they slide right on through. So, need to find some different sleeves. I don't think there's enough meat there to drill them out. They might be paper thin, but I do have these out of my S10 leaf springs, which are the right size for these bolts. I thought maybe you could push these sleeves out, drill the polyurethane out, and push these sleeves in, then they'll be right. I was checking on the size of the bolt. I was thinking a 13, is it 13, 16 steel bit? I think that's what it needed. It's probably metric, but. Anyways, getting further. Oh, the other thing I need to show. This is a gas tank hooked up, the filler neck. Hooked up to that station wagon tank. Six seven spell. Waggy tank, wag on tank, El Camino, I think same too. Like I said, that way the filler neck ain't coming out back here. It's just hooked right back up to where it was. I'll let the car down here a little bit further so you can actually look at this. There you can see the gas neck filler is in there. Get your high octane petrol in there. Or your craft 87 octane in it, whatever you want to run. There you can see it mounted up in there. Right down and hooked to the tank with an adapter because this is smaller than the tank was and you had to raise the adapter on the tank. But that should be it for now. I might have repeated myself on this. I might have shown some of the same stuff twice, but watch and listen anyways. And if I don't mention it, probably as much as I should. Appreciate everybody that subscribes and watches. If you aren't a subscriber, please subscribe, like, share, comment, and all that good stuff. See some more on the Monty. More on the Impala to come. And got more on the S10 in here. But I've already showed some videos on these cars, so maybe I'm a little late too. But here's a look at the Monte. Rear wheel drive. LS53 conversion. Frankie's looking good.